Why do birds suddenly appear every time you are near? Just like me, they long to be close to you. Hello, everybody. This is Dr. Willie Jolly and the beautiful, brilliant, and vivacious. This is Dee. And we're the authors of the book, Make Love, Make Money, Make It Last, 10 Secrets to Shape a Great Marriage. Uh, we want to welcome everybody, wherever you may be watching from uh, around the country, around the world, uh, whether you're watching live or you're watching on the replay on YouTube, on our YouTube channel. We're just grateful that you're watching. We encourage you to tell everybody you know about this show and tell them that we are trying to save marriages still after about four or five years now. We had a goal when we read to, wrote this book, Save a Million Marriages, Enhance a Million Marriages. And we are working diligently on that. We are also want to uh, take a moment to say, hope everybody has a great 4th of July this week coming up. Uh, we hope you all had a great Father's Day a couple weeks ago for those who didn't. Terrence, I got to read Parents' piece because Terrence said, how do you question, how do you reduce the divorce rate? Period. Answer. You can start by purchasing two copies of the Jolly's book. Thank you, Terrence. We love Terrence. Uh, thank you, Terrence. And Linda and Greg are watching from home. Are y'all sitting around the fire Actually pit? Actually at home. I'm surprised. <laughs> around the fire pit, maybe. Uh, greetings to everybody, wherever you are. People are joining in from so many places, and we're grateful for that. Uh, we want to talk tonight about a topic that has come to us. Compromise. About compromise. And it was brought to our attention by... Um, somebody who said that they did not want to compromise with their mate and it, it led to divorce. <laughs> uh, whether it's compromise about... But that was... She's very different now. Okay, but... Yes, but the issue was the unwillingness to compromise and find middle ground. But that was funny when uh, she said that one area was about sleeping with your pet. Sleeping with a pet, that's right. <laughs> said uh, that was a problem. Now, you know what? There was another couple. We went to their home before the pandemic. The wife had a little dog. The husband said, I don't, I'm not feeling a little dog in the bedroom. The wife said she wanted to have the little dog in the bedroom with her. One day, the husband gets up to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night, and the little dog had left a little gift for him on his side of the bed. That was the straw that broke the camel's back. That was the end of it. And they of the dog in bed that or the, the, end the, the end of the marriage. Because it was no compromise. She she was well unwilling to compromise. He said, just don't have the dog in the bedroom. I understand you love your little doggy, but the dog in the So she loved the dog more than him. Appeared to be. So that said, that's it's all about compromise. And that's what we want to well, talk about. Well, before you can get there, I think what you brought up is you have to be willing to compromise. You have to want to compromise, right? Well, that's the key. Why don't we took first define what compromise is? You don't have to have everything your way 100% the willingness to meet in the middle, That's the right. willingness to have a seesaw relationship, a seesaw back and forth. Seesaw. Because you care about each other. That that doesn't even become a big deal. I'll let that explain the seesaw. you care about each other. You got to explain the seesaw if you're going to bring it up because you're assuming that everybody has been along with us on the journey and, or everybody has the book. They might not have the book. And we want to make sure we understand. We, we have learned that the, the person who loves the least has the most control. Has the most power. Not control, power. They have more power. And therefore, more they, power that would lead to maybe control or what they're getting more what they want. What, what, then you have to explain that. They have more power to do what? To get what they want, to make demands, to... to, to because they're less likely to compromise? No, 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 not there. Not there yet. You get what they want. So if 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 you say, if I loved you more and you said, and I'm always chasing you, you have the power of the relationship. And you can say- So I have, 
So, so I don't like that. I, I was saying I have more influence. Okay, that's a good word. Influence. Power is kind of okay. I influence. Have, I'll I take have influence. More, I have more influence to get you to do what I want. That's right. So the best relationships are where the power vacillates. Or the influence. I like the best influence. Way. The the influence the because sometimes when the you power of the influence let's use that the power of the influence vacillates. This week I love you more, next week you love me more, and it goes back and forth. That way it's more compromise because you're willing to compromise. Go back to what you key. said. Okay. You're willing. Your willingness to compromise. That's right. To be influenced mm -hmm. because you care about that person, their thoughts their feelings and their wants and you want to please them. Right. And that's why I think our relationship has has been for 39 years old, by the way. Bravo, bravo, bravo. We are three days into our 39th year. Mm -hmm. Our anniversary was Friday the 28th. Mm -hmm. And so June 28th, we are three. What did we do? 29th, 30th, and 1st. What, what did we do? Did? We went to church. All night. Prayer so we were church. planning to have a party. And that was early on. You early said, on. You and then I, I always say, well, I want to go dancing. Yeah, we want to go dance, because she like go got them in the you know, mm -hmm. Jerusalem. Line dancing. And line dance. She <laughs> like all that stuff. So and the walk. Anyway, we were planning to go to a place to do that. And then we got a notice from our church that they were going to have the biannual prayer vigil. Prayer vigil on the 28th. We had to make a decision. Do we dance or do we go to church? That was not a big decision. No, but it was a decision that to me. We, 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 that's not a big decision because our maturity level. Some other people might be, but we know that God has been so good to us and our marriage, our health, we, our children, our grandchildren. We, we're grateful. So <clears throat> we said we'll dance later. Friday night, we went to church, had a wonderful service. It was a wonderful, wonderful experience. experience. Yes. That's yes. right. Thank you, Olympia. Mm -hmm. uh, they, the Borleys have been so kind to invite us to, to dinner. We're going to take you up on that. Okay, we're going to take you up on that. Okay, so uh, let's talk about, uh, as we have 39 years, 39 years, and we were at a, a, an event yesterday, and they talked about our marriage in the book, and and... They asked, how long have you, did you date? We dated four years. So we really- We went to an event, a birthday celebration. Oh, we got to tell this story. You got to hear this one before we get into compromise. Yesterday was quite a day. So we go to church and then we go to a birthday celebration for our dear friend, Jackie Gales, where the iconic gospel radio show personality. She's been on radio and host, and host for, for over 30, 40 years. She's been on radio for over 40 years, has the number one, has had the perennial number one gospel program on Sundays for years and years and years on WHUR. Anyway, she had a birthday party at a restaurant. I'll relay, I'll, it'll remain nameless because what I'm going to tell you would not be good publicity for them. So, Which Olynthia reminded us because I hadn't even thought about it. Yes. So... We go to the restaurant. We are running late because we had altar call at the church, which was overflowing. It was amazing. It was an overflow. So everybody had to participate, everybody. And so we went to the we went to the altar room. We took our time ushering people into uh, you know, doing joining the church or whatever they, they would come up to the altar for. Listening to their needs, yes, having right. conversations. That's right. And so it took a, a, about an extra half hour. 45 minutes. So we were late. We were supposed to be there at 1 30 because they we didn't know we just were told it was a special party. Well, if we come to find out it was a party of a small group of her innermost friends around a table. It wasn't a big party. Just one of their small party rooms. Right. And it was a on they had courses they were bringing out. And she called and said, Where are you? We said, We're on our way. So I said to Dean, here's the card. I'm gonna drop you off. I'll go park. Go on up so she'll be her 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 fears will be assuaged that we're here. I'm parking the car. I'm parking the car, and Dee calls me, and I'm saying hello, and there's no answer. Hello, and I hear that. What? 
I didn't know at that point that you could not actually hear me. She's finally got enough signal to say, I'm stuck in the elevator. What? I'm stuck in the elevator. You're stuck. I mean, what do you, I'm stuck between floors. <clears throat> Please tell them. So we get to, I get to the front door, the guys, the, 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 the maitre d', I said, look, my wife is stuck in the elevator. He said, what? They didn't even know it. So uh, then I called. No them. electricity in the elevator. So we, so we go to the fourth floor, fifth floor, which is an interesting number because it has a 4.6. Guy presses the button. I get a, on the elevator. It takes me up, up, up. And then it has a taste. And it has a taste. And it stops. It says four on the front. And then there's the rear that says 4R. So the elevator really has two two openings to it. You probably didn't know that because you didn't use the elevator at all. No, 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 no. So, so anyway, I go, they get the manager, the manager says, oh my goodness. So then we try and reach her, I'm texting her, I'm trying to call her. Then I go to the room and tell uh, Jackie and the people there, hey y'all, here's the card. Sorry we late, but we're gonna be a little later because D is stuck on the elevator. Everybody, oh my God! So they start having a fit. I, I'm, I don't know that because they think as some of them are claustrophobic. Yes. So they think, is she on the elevator by herself? Oh my God. I'm in the elevator and I start texting. First I think, you know, worst case scenario, the elevator drops. Okay, what are you supposed to do? I seen it on TV, you need to get to the floor. So I sit on the floor and I think momentarily, I have a white dress on and my dress is going to get dirty. But I thought, you know, who cares about that? Let me get myself on the floor so this elevator drops. I won't have all these broken bones. At least I'll be able to move around. So I'm sitting on the floor and I start texting, which texting works because you did get a text from me. I did get a text. And I sent out a couple others. And then she said, is it? so then they call the fire department because they can't get so the elevator. they have to holler. And it sounds like you're in a well because you kept saying, can you hear me? And I was like yelling, yeah, I can hear you. Yes, I can. And, and I heard the fire department is coming. Great. The fire department is coming. The fire department comes. And so they- like 20 some minutes later, they were so kind. A shout out to DC Fire Department. Yay, they were, they were wonderful. They were wonderful. And, and uh, my husband, actually took pictures of no, the no. rescue. Oh, I videotaped it. I mean, I'm telling people this is a great opportunity here, you know? Uh, um, Olympia said that that would be her. She can't she can't handle confined spaces. Aww. So so we, we, we got out. She climbed up a ladder with her white dress, up a ladder, so, out of the... So, so we have to tell, okay, just like on television, you know, when they, you, you hear the sound and they're unscrewing the top of the elevator portion. And they say, move to the front. I'm thinking, move to the front. What's the front? Is it is it the front front or is it the front back? Move to the front. So I scoot up and half of the top of the elevator starts coming down. They're dropping it down. And I grab it and move it to the side. This thing is heavy. Uh -huh. And then they said, we're going to drop a ladder down. Can you climb? I can climb up. I work out every day. Yeah, I, I, get me out of here, right? And so I said, hmm, should I take my shoes off? And the guy was very kind. He said, you know, the floor is dirty. So I think I'd leave the shoes on. I said, I got on heels. He said, we'll help you. It was so nice. So they dropped this, ele this ladder, and it's like little sections. It's that collapsible. Clicks, it clicks into place. Heavy. Mm -hmm. And then I start climbing up. She climbs up. I've got the video. Well, Y'all will be on it, seeing it online because I'm a bit, I'm, I'm post it uh, once we edit it because it's long and I want to post it very succinctly. So but I have to climb up over to the side. Then they pull that elevate that ladder, ladder up and then reposition it so that I can climb down on the front side. That's right. On the outside. But and they she, were so... I, I, 
I, I was you should really write a note touch. to the. Uh, I will do that. Yeah, to, to the fire chief. Yes, you should. Write they that. were there were four of them. You should to send the and picture. And they were so kind. They were and they would say, "Let me put my hand on your back." I was saying to myself, like, just, just touch me. Just help, help me get me out of here." Help. She yeah, goes, she, they were go when she first called me, she said, "Get me out of here." <laughs> when I could hear, her, I said, "What? Get me out of here?" I said, "Okay, I'm on it. I'm on it." So. I was running up and down the steps between the two elevators, the first floor and the second, the first floor and the fourth floor, running up and down. Can you hear me there? No, go back down. Can you hear me there? And I'm telling the manager, I got to so you get, didn't know I was on I the I didn't know fourth where floor. you were. No one knew where you were. Isn't that so, so this elevator, people coming in and out, how were they coming in and out? The one elevator was not working. It wasn't working. For me. So, so it was quite an experience. She got out. And all along, I said, whatever you do, folks, here's the lesson. Don't panic. Don't panic. When you're going through a situation, a situation that's dire or difficult, don't panic. You can be concerned. You can be pressed to get out of there, but don't panic. There's a difference. I think I was more, I was more prayerful. Once I said, what's the worst case? I thought, what's the worst case that could happen? It says the elevator, I thought, oh, elevator would drop. Okay, I need to get down on the floor. She was down on the floor. I had I was a little sitting picture. Sitting on the floor. When they opened the door, she was sitting on the floor. And I said, We're coming to get you. They're coming to get you. And she said, They said, We're coming to get you, ma'am. And she said, Okay. So it was great. Quite a quite an experience. So that so anyway. Appreciation for the fire. So that was quite a day. But but someone at the dinner or uh, luncheon said, How long y'all been married? How long y'all been together? So we've been married for 39 years as of Friday, the 28th. But we dated for four years before that. And so we've been together over 40. So I guess we learned how to compromise. We have learned how to compromise. So that's what we want to talk about tonight. People have to understand that one of the secrets to success in marriage is compromise. Can't always have it your way. And it's okay. Why would I always want it my way? Because some people want it their way. They are used to want it. They used to have it. They, you know, what we say in the book is you leave, no, you leave, cleave, cleave and weave. And weave a new relationship. Right. And many times they come from, um, and Gladys said, oh my God, glad that you were calm and that your faith <laughs> kicked in. Amen, Gladys. We Thank you, it. Sharon Franco. <laughs> Happy anniversary. Thank you. Thank you. We definitely know how to compromise. So when you leave, your parents' home. You, you, when you're a child, you act like a child. You, you, you perform like a child. But when you grow up, you left, you left childish things alone in the past, and you, you became mature. And so, some people don't leave it in the past. They bring that childishness. They bring those, those. But you know what? I think sometimes it's hard to leave it because it's a part. It, it's a part of you, and if you're not aware of it, such as. A couple of things that came to focus for me, like communication style. How do you agree to disagree in, in your relationship, right? Yeah. Most of us bring how we learned how to deal with that from our family. From our household. Right. Huh? We have some families that argue until they get it right and some mm -hmm. fight or flight. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. But whatever it is, when you bring that, I want to have it on my way all the time. From your childhood, maybe you were spoiled, mm -hmm. you got everything you wanted, but when you bring it to a marriage and you still want everything your way and no compromise, that's gonna be a problem. Well, you're not gonna be together long. Well, well I don't know. It ain't gonna be good if it is. <laughs> so we've learned to compromise, mm -hmm. and and that's one of the secrets. So how do you compromise? You have to communicate yes it's, it's like that one of those three things right 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 sex money communication yep is that right yep we don't know which one comes first but, but communication is that common thread yes and it's i always go back to it is how you talk to your mate it's That's not right. always what you say because you might not have some of those tools to help you Use the right words so that your partner gets the the essence of what you're feeling. Right. So we have to work on the tools for communicating. Okay, you guys. I got to read, read some. I want to read it. Well, from the book. I want to read it right from the book. Compromise page. If you got the book, it's page. What did that say? Forty nine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
We live in Washington, D.C., where politicians often act like compromise is a bad word. But in terms of marriage, I assure you that compromise is a great word. Smart business people understand the power of compromise, and smart people in marriage understand it too. Compromise, by its definition, is a settlement agreement which is reached by mutual concessions by both parties. Mm, say that again. A settlement agreement which is reached by both by mutual concessions of both parties. We see that the marriages that succeed see that marriages where there is the ability to compromise are wonderful. Sometimes the wife gets her way. Sometimes the husband gets his way. And sometimes they meet in the middle and keep it moving. I had the honor of doing amidst events with Dr. Stephen Covey, the author of Seven Habits of Highly Effective People in Australia. He wrote that one of the most important habits was win-win, not only as important in business, but also in marriage. Uh, I heard NBC weatherman Al Roker say on TV one morning that neither person has to be right all the time. It is win-win. Our friends, the Bermans, call it sharing the power. We had dinner with Sanford and Linda Berman, who have been married for 50 years. What is in, in, interesting is that Sanford Berman is one of the top divorce lawyers in America. He said many people come to him to get a divorce, complain about how their spouse would not compromise. Sanford said he thinks that might could have, that very well might have could have been a, 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 a avoided a divorce if they had just shared the power. He has learned over the years that marriage is about sharing the power, the money, the responsibilities, the household chores, and even sharing the good and the bad. We interviewed our dear friends, Bill and Vivian Clark, we call her Biddy, who are lifelong friends of ours. We asked what was the secret to their ability to get married while in college and then successfully live together for over 40 years. They're almost 50 years now. They looked at each other and in unison, in unison, I won't forget it, we were sitting at a table at a restaurant uh, in Alexandria, Old Town Alexandria. They said in unison, they said compromise and being conciliatory. Woo! I, I think you can't compromise if you don't care, really deeply care about what the other person thinks. Right, that's okay? right, right. And, and a lot of couples or individuals who are married complain about their mate to, yeah. uh, to us. Yeah, and, they and, complain. And they they complain. And so I was saying, you remember why you married them? You do bring that to, uh, to attention, but many people he, forget. He's, he's much more counselor-like than I am. Yes. I'm like, do you remember why you married him? Right. Were you forced? Is there anything about him you like? Think on these things. That's something my dad would say. Oh, say that. Think, think on, on these think things. Think on these things. Now, let's see, some areas where there's a, a need for compromise in terms of the style of how you communicate. You really need to study your mate so that you can anticipate some of their needs because you understand their communication style. And I think you're very easy, as I say to some women, because you are naturally a communicator. And a, and a lot of males, this probably sounds totally sexist, have an inability to express their emotions very comfortably so that they make their mate feel valued. And I think that's an important word. Value. You, you, Ooh, you good work, word. And I say that to you often. You work at that. You make me feel valued and appreciated. So I'm going to lean in and listen because you make me feel that whatever I have to say or offer is is a value. And I and I kid you sometimes. I say, I know what you're doing. I, I know. I, I know what you're doing. I've been with you long enough to know you're trying to influence me because you're trying to get me to do something I don't want to do. <laughs> But you made me feel so loved and so careful. Speaking of, I tend to go along with. Speaking of, let's talk about your flowers. Compromise. Flowers. Okay. They're now, everywhere. Now, now that's that. That goes back to everywhere. compromise in terms of lifestyle. Yeah. You know, from from having the the pet who needs to sleep with you. I don't think when I had a pet, you you compromised because I had little dogs and stuff when yeah. we were dating. He would walk the dog and everything after we got married. He walked the dog. Dog was gone. Dog was gone by the time we got married. <laughs> dog was gone. I replaced him. I, I, I could not have animals and Willie and kids. It was just too much. A dog had to go. So, so she had plants everywhere, and we got a compromise. Uh, yes. 
uh, making it to bed was a compromise. I had to get rid of the plants and the water because I was, I'm always rooting something. And Willie said, you know what? The stuff swimming in the water. <laughs> then mosquitoes in the water. You have to do something about that. So I had to compromise. I had it's to get a, rid of mutual... I had to get rid of the plants, the fresh cuttings in the water. And now that it's warm, you notice I have moved them outside. outside. Okay, another example, compromise. I make up the bed every day. I, I never made up the bed when I was doing it. So I had to convince him. But I so gave not, a little not, bit. Now she wanted those tight. What you call them? Hospital? Hospital corners. Yeah, I said, that ain't gonna work. Well, you never knew how to do it. I couldn't do it right. But you know what we did? We compromised. I pull up the, sh the covers. I put those big old pillars everywhere. Mm -hmm. She's happy. It looks beautiful. Okay? Mm -hmm. Compromise. Mm -hmm. I put my clothes away. Compromise. He puts his clothes away by throwing them under the bed. No, no, in the closet. Not under the bed. bed. Not under the bed. I'm sorry. I just throw them in the closet. He throws them in the closet. I'm like. And close the door. I, I'm not going to open the door. Don't Let me tell you one area where we got a question about how do you compromise in terms of finances oh, for, for, yeah. for new couples? Well, you have to figure, first of all, you're going to have to talk about the money. Now, you say, well, if you're sleeping well, I mean, you're intimate, but you don't talk about the money? How, how does that work? They, they're so in love, they can't talk about the money. But you got to talk about the money. So whether or not you have enough or any at all, or excess. So they don't talk about that. So, sometimes so really sometimes they're, to, only, they're so infatuated and they're so... And there's something trending on, on social media that says the male should pay all the bills. Now, this is this is the, the dating, I guess. I got, I got somebody asking that question. What you talking about, Willis? <laughs> <laughs> what you talking about, so, Willis? Talk about it. Sit on social media like, well, what the they man, talking about, Willis? The man should just pay all the bills. No, 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 no. If you're dating and you listen and watch now, no, 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 no. Why not? Because it's not fair. Mm -hmm. It's not fair. It should be equitable. This time I take you out, next time you take me out. Mm -hmm. This time you pay for the meal, like time I pay for it. I think part of it is just greed, though. They're, they're not, they're yeah, not just, in love, they don't care. And then it's a lot a free of, meal, a free ride. A free meal, a free ride. And they don't care if you end up with charges up the yin yang and you cannot pay off your bill at the end of every month. And, and, and I think it's so fascinating. You have a million one ways of how you can move this debt from here to here to here. You still got debt. You got debt. I was listening to one of my finance programs. They were saying, okay, so if you, you charge $5,000 and you pay the minimum payment, which is like $35 or the $5,000 bill, it would take you like seven years to pay. And by that time, you paid $7,000 in interest plus the $5,000 you originally owed if you charge nothing else. Oh, my God. It's terrible. So but, you're trying to impress somebody who doesn't care about you anyway. Anywho, okay. So now. Oh, when you get to, come on, that's another. Religious and cultural differences. Ooh, how you got to compromise on that. That's a, that's, oh my goodness. So how do we do that? She went to a Baptist church. But look, wait a minute. Let's first, let's say we were both Christians. Yeah, we both. And denomination only. But we, we had, different. but we were different. And I went to a, a church that I grew up. And she went to a different church where I didn't particularly not like it. It just didn't feed me. And the church I went she to. She went to a highbrow church. Right? Yeah, the highbrow music church. didn't feed her. They, 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 they had, had more, uh, uh, it, was, it liturgical? was. Liturgical? Is that the right word? It's cool. It's oh. cool. Oh. He and went. So, he went to a church where they did choral music. Yeah, so like, it's big difference. So look, look. Mm -hmm. So what we did was compromise. Mm -hmm. I didn't make her come to my church. She didn't make me come to her church. We found a a new church. But we went to each other's church. Yeah, we did visit the, the, when we were dating yeah, and everything. But when we got married, we found a we team. agreed. We compromised. Let's find a spot where we both can be happy. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, Sharon Fanto says. Uh, one is neat, one is messy, will always need compromise. Um, yeah, she said she leaves a mess. Her husband is probably <laughs> neat. I'm messy. She's oh, neat. Let me share this. I had to bring this up. Now, this is a toothpaste. And let me explain what's going on here. I did, this is part of a icebreaker when you do seminars. And it's kind of open people up and like, 
And the question becomes, how do you like your toothpaste? So somebody actually sent this to me. How do you like, how do you squeeze your toothpaste? And I'm one of these people, I like to squeeze it straight down, nice and straight. So somebody sent me a toothpaste squeezer. I had never seen a toothpaste squeezer. I, on the other hand. He on the, his, his toothpaste looks jacked up. It's got all kinds of lumps and bumps and stuff. I, I, I didn't have time. I thought about it. I said, no, I'm not going to bring this toothpaste down. But Oh, why are we compromise the toothpaste? She said it today. I can't stand her toothpaste. His toothpaste is like sugar. Sugar, sugar, oh, sugar. It's, it's sugar, 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 sugar. <laughs> it's nauseating. <laughs> so I want, I, I want medicated toothpaste. Our Karen said, keep talking about the money. Keep talking about the money. Uh, life, oh, no, we got, we got, this got to be a part two. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. Because our time is up. Because oh, we're talking, we over. We over. You know, our time is up. Um, we got more to talk about. So part two next week. Like parenting styles. And oh, we got a lot. Well parenting styles. styles. That's a big one. And household responsibility. Big one. I have some research about uh, it. Uh, we're, getting ready, we're getting ready to go down that rabbit hole. Our time is up. We'll see you next week for part two. Does that make sense, everybody? Give me a shout out. Is that okay, T Terrence and, and Linda? Is that okay? Uh, uh, Sharon and Gladys of next week, uh, part two. <laughs> uh, Denise, Denise Matthews says, great show. It. Great show. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Sharon. I love you guys. Deborah Dickinson uh, and many Houston. We know who you are, many Houston. <laughs> bless you. God bless you. We can't wait to hug you and hug you real good because we've heard nothing but great things about you from the hour. Uh, uh, the Kazara said yes. Next week, let's do a compromise. You guys have a safe Land of Pack says Miss D is ready laughing out loud. <laughs> and, 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 and Karen's went back. If you don't talk about the money in the beginning, you'll talk about it in and the end. So we're going to talk and more end. about the money and, and strategies next week. Have a great 4th of Wait, July. Wait, I need to say this about my calendar. Go baby. Okay, so July 3rd is Wimbledon starts. It ends Ooh. on the 16th. How about that? And Good. you are a tennis person. Yeah. So then we got 4th. Please, please, please be careful on the 4th of July. Yep. Okay. 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 And then, did you know this World Chocolate Day? Oh, don't skip July 6th, Islamic New Year. Islamic New Year is July uh, 6th. Allah, right? Assalamu alaikum to those who are Muslim and uh, God bless you. Okay. All right. We've got World Chocolate Day. You like chocolate? Ooh, I like chocolate. We're going to, we're, I'm going to have to. I fell off the wagon. You fell off the I wagon. I fell off the wagon when I was when in I was Vancouver. When I was re recovering oh. from uh, just the, the, the whole experience and, and the cold and all that. I he, fell off the wagon. He ate everything. 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 But then you know what? Stuff I haven't eaten I, in years. How do I know? Because he had to confess. I, I, I had to tell you. I ate this. I was like. I ate lots of stuff. I had to tell her I yesterday. Was watching. All right, uh, CJ Gross, good to have you. Thank you. Said, yep, next week is good. Happy 4th, everybody. Be safe. Be safe out there. Nothing like Chocolate Char Terrence says. Look, our time is up. Well, we love talking to y'all. <laughs> uh, we, we're going to have some sponsors coming on, or we're going to be working with sponsors because we want to get a way to help more companies and organizations to improve their profits by influencing and impacting people who we talk to on this. So we'll be we'll, we'll bringing that on soon. But in the meantime, between time, go to jollymarriage.com, watch the TED Talk. Uh, if you're listening to my Radio One show, or if you're uh, on my social media this week with my one minute motivational messages, I've been talking for the last three weeks about marriage. And June is marriage month, so we're closing it out this week uh, at the end of June into July. But people have been buying the marriage book and drove. They've been watching the TED Talk, jollymarriage.com, jollymarriage.com. And then if you want fixing problems, we got a replay, replay, relationship repair series at, at jollymarriage.com slash events, jollymarriage.com slash events, the, the, a five-part uh, communication, uh, sex and, and relate, romance, money, raising kids, and blended family. All right? My time is up. We got to go. Thank I know. you. Thank y'all. God you bless y'all. Happy. Take care. Happy. Uh, happy. 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 Fourth. Fourth. Why do birds suddenly appear every time you are near?
just like me They long to be close to you 